Welcome on this course on data visualization for business. Um, so the first question I'd like to address is the one of uh, why visualizing data instead of keeping it uh, you know, in a spreadsheet. Uh, well, the problem to be solved is that uh, the more data we get, uh, the, um, the less easy uh, it becomes to understand simply because um, it's not because you have more data uh, that the comprehension immediately follows. Uh, so that's a quite a, a big issue because we know that uh, big data uh, can bring more uh, opportunities uh, in terms of um, uh, patterns that could be detected or value that could be created or services that could be invented but where to actually uh, get the understanding that you need in order to create all of that. Well, uh, data visualization is one of the answers to this problem. Uh, historically, uh, one of the founding figures of data visualization is uh, John Tuckey. Uh, he's a, a major statistician from the 20th uh, century and he devised uh, what he called uh, exploratory data analysis. Uh, that's interesting because he was kind of, uh, uh, he was quite uh, good at the quantitative method. He invented uh, some of them. And still he insisted that um, uh, simply drawing some, um, uh, some visualizations uh, representing data sets uh, with a pen on a paper uh, was actually a very powerful uh, step in the analysis because you could explore the data set in a way that a, reg a regular statistical uh, um, uh, model or tool uh, couldn't. So thank you John Tuckey for, uh, for this insight. Uh, data visualization um, is, has really to, uh, taken off with um, uh, the web and interactive uh, visualizations, but before that, uh, you could say that data visualization has roots in uh, three movements. The first one is uh, the scientists who uh, uh, study how um, humans uh, perceive uh, visualizations in terms of colors, in terms of shapes, in terms of uh, well, any dimension you, you, you wish to, to study. Uh, so uh, basically, um, uh, scientists uh, studying uh, human-computer interactions uh, are involved in data visualization um, and others uh, from this uh, field. Uh, cartography and geographical information systems are, of course, uh, very much neighbors to data visualization because many uh, data sets uh, lend themselves to uh, being visualized on a map. Uh, so geographers are actually uh, um, to be found in, in data visualization. And finally, uh, you might have heard of this uh, um, uh, person, uh, Edward uh, Tuft, or Tufty maybe. Um, he's uh, the one that basically uh, uh, wrote the first books about how should you design and present information so as to make it um, to make it easier to understand and uh, without any bias um, for the viewer. Uh, so he he has written a couple of very influential books on how you should actually design uh, visual displays of data. Um, but all of that was, I mean, he, he was basically before the web and before web technologies. So uh, that's why I call him a, a precursor instead of, a, of an actor of data visualization. So what, f what would be a good example of a kind of a typical uh, data visualization to basically set uh, the framework? Well, um, one of the first data visualizations is to my opinion, still very much representative um, of the genre. Um, it's called the Map of the Market, and it was created by Matt Wattenberg um, in 1998, uh, so quite a long time ago. Um, the thing is, it's still online. If you go to smartmoney.com, uh, you will find it. It's a simple uh, map, uh, a tree map, if you want to be precise, on a web page and with this, this simple square full of uh, red and, and green uh, rectangles, you can see at a glance how is the stock market doing since the 
at the beginning of the day. Um, so it just uh, shows by sectors uh, which are the stocks that uh, perform the, uh, uh, the better and the worst. Um, uh, and then if you zoom on, if you click on one of the sectors, the map basically zooms in, zooms in on the sector and you can uh, f drill down uh, further. Uh, so in just in one, um, uh, um, in, in one uh, uh, glimpse, uh, uh, you have immediately an idea of uh, what's going on on, on on a very complex data set, which is all stocks uh, in the market. Other key examples of uh, data visualizations that uh, I find are particularly um, amazing. Uh, so I picked uh, one per year since 2010. And uh, the first one is um, a memorial for the uh, Twin Towers that was uh, not created, but uh, your top part, uh, 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 um, uh, data viz specialist, he participated in the creation of this memorial and basically it was about how to display the names of all the victims in, in, the, in, in the monument that would be uh, the place uh, of the fallen uh, Twin Towers and how actually put the names on the display in a meaningful way and he basically devised algorithms um, that would uh, put the names of the victim close to each other uh, depending on their relations at the moment of the drama or, uh, or uh, depending on their past uh, relationships. I find it very uh, very interesting, interesting example because it shows that uh, uh, data visualization is not just for uh, business data and it's not just for the screen, for a, a computer screen. That's something that can go out of the screen and, and actually have a, a very deep emotional uh, content. The second um, example I'd like to show is an, an OECD uh, visualization uh, created by Maurice uh, Stefaner uh, and that's basically um, he succeeded in making uh, statistics that usually nobody reads except for specialists uh, making these statistics actually enjoyable to read and and to compare and to manipulate so that's basically a, a, a web page where you can uh, um, uh, input your uh, choice for what you actually like in life. Is it education? Do you care about uh, healthcare? Or is it more important for you to, to live in, in a city, even if pollution is high, but maybe salaries would be higher um, than in a rural area. So you play with all of that and depending on your choices, well, countries get different rankings. Um, so that's, uh, that's from 2010, but that's still, in my opinion, one of the best data visualizations uh, in town. Another one is um, about uh, weather data. Uh, so it's a wind map um, from, the, from the US. And what I like about it is that it's real time. So when you display the page, you, what you see is actually what you, uh, what's happening at the moment. And there is no, there is no figure or nothing. It's just a drawing that evolves and that shows you very clearly uh, how strong the winds are and where um, in the U.S. Uh, these winds are the strongest. So uh, uh, very strong and very powerful and very useful in terms of in, in when you have a storm. Very useful uh, data visualization. And finally. Um, uh, uh, a visualization from 2013 where uh, all the drone strikes in Pakistan are represented uh, individually. So each strike and the victims uh, are represented in a single map. Uh, two things to note on this um, uh, visualization. First, to say that uh, data visualization is a very powerful, powerful tool for advocacy. Um, so here in the context of a political situation, but for um, marketing and communication campaigns, it really shows you the, the emotion and the intensity of the message that data visualizations can, can convey. Um, and the second uh, feature of this visualization, I think it really highlights the, fa the fact that um, a trademark of data visualization is that the data is disaggregated. In this case, each 
uh, line on, on the map shows you a single drone strike uh, and you have uh, quite a number of them. So uh, in, in one screen you have a global view of a complex uh, situation. Again, a very uh, uh, well uh, 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 created uh, data visualization. So what makes for a good data visualization in general? The first one is the first condition and that's something that you can't uh, negotiate is that data must be respected. So you can't uh, basically um, change the visualization to make it more beautiful if uh, it means that um, the underlying data will be misrepresented. It's ab absolutely um, not the case that you can do that. The visualization in terms of, uh, for example, if you say that um, the size of a cycle, uh, you know, a, a big or a small cycle would represent a quantity well, you have to always follow this rule. You can't at some point say, well, I just want to make this bubble bigger because it's going to be nice. No, I mean, it has to reflect the case that the underlying figure is large, right? Um, so basically, data must be respected. It's not about creating infographics or doing photoshopping. Uh, no, the data is the copy, uh, sorry, the, the visual is the loyal representation of the underlying data. Second, uh, data often remains largely disaggregated. That's what we've seen in the previous examples. Uh, in the Twin Tower, you see all the names. In the wind map, uh, you see actually all, um, all uh, uh, regions. Uh, for uh, the OECD, well, it's ag aggregated, but you still see all the parameters and all the countries. And for the drone strikes, well, you see all the victims actually, and all the um, all the strikes. Um, third, uh, the result. I mean, how do you see a good data visualization where basically the visualization is striking? Uh, and again, not because it has been photoshopped or whatever, but just because the way it has been designed actually impacts you. I mean, here at, at the heart and. Uh, um, uh, in terms of reflect, uh, reflective uh, uh, thinking as well. So that's the easiest way to check whether data visualization works. Is it boring or do, do you actually keep staring uh, at it? And finally, uh, a last criteria would be that uh, data visualizations would be uh, addictive in the sense that they are so much engaging that you come back again and again uh, um, to them. So how do you create this data visualization? So you, it's always a kind of creative process. You can't really pinpoint um, a, a complete workflow. Uh, but still, uh, Ben Fry, who, well, um, uh, who is a very central actor in uh, data visualization um, and design and technology, uh, has identified in a PhD thesis he has written in 2005, he has uh, identified seven steps. So acquiring data, of course, first, then pass it. Passing the data just means uh, reading it from a machine format to a format that you can actually uh, manipulate. Then filtering, because sometimes you don't need the whole data set, but just a subset of the data set. Then you do some data mining uh, on it. For example, if it's, uh, if, an if it's an address, maybe you, you uh, you know, a postal address in the, in the data set, maybe you have to find uh, the longitude and the latitude of this, um, um, of this address, so some form of data manipulation. Then you can project it on a screen or in the space, and that's the visualization uh, stage. But you, you don't stop there. Then you refine the thing and you interact with it. And these two, two steps mean that basically you provide the uh, viewer uh, with some way to interact with the visualization. So either you can zoom in um, or you can um, hover with the mouse on the, on the visualization or you can filter what you see. I mean, all of that uh, makes for a more engaging and interactive uh, experience. So um, if you can do all of that, how can it be of use in a business context? Well, I have identified four 
um, uh, functions that data visualizations can serve. The first one is exploration. If you have a data set which is very well, so big and so yeah, just so big that you can't read it, um, um, you know, by yourself, um, uh, data visualization re can really help you uh, uh, getting a bird's eye view on the data set, uh, so that you can summarize it and so that you can explore. Uh, the data set in detail and find uh, what you're looking for uh, in, in this data set uh, patterns or outliers or relationships or whatnot. The second uh, function is communication. Uh, as we've seen in the examples, data visualization can really enhance the data in a way that makes it easier to communicate to non specialists uh, or to clients. So um, uh, basically complex analytical results that uh, are uh, uh, in tables of figures, if you can uh, translate them visually, you can actually communicate their value uh, much better. So uh, that's uh, of course very interesting. Uh, data visualizations help you to control uh, a data set. So if you have uh, monthly figures, um, uh, it's very hard just by looking at the table itself whether things are evolving in a good way or in a bad way or well um, so trends are hard to 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 uh, to, vi uh, to 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 understand visualizations help you um, um, get a sense of uh, uh, what's going on so for control uh, data visualizations are are essential and finally emotion so it's uh, it's related to communication, but that's not exactly the same. Communication can take place without any emotion. I like to insist, and we've seen that in the, uh, in the examples, that uh, pictures uh, convey emotion in a way sometimes that words can't. Uh, and again, data visualization is a very good uh, medium to achieve uh, emotional impact. So. Uh, how would you do to create a data visualization? So I've described the seven steps uh, by Ben Fry, but uh, you're not obliged to basically implement them yourselves. You can uh, externalize the creation of a data visualization or you can do it by yourself. I mean, you have a variety of options. Uh, so from the most uh, customized option where you will hire a freelancer maybe, or uh, you will um, have somebody uh, internal to the organization that will uh, uh, do these uh, visualizations or you will hire a small agency. All of that would be kind of for custom projects. The other possibility is to basically, sc basically scale up and uh, use solutions that uh, run on a regular, on a permanent basis in your organization. So you don't have a project-based data vis visualization you just have um, um, a permanent solution to visualize any data set which is produced um, at any time in your organization. And that would call for a more uh, BI, that is business intelligence uh, solutions, um, fully integrated to uh, your uh, uh, information systems. So let's see uh, each of these uh, possibilities. Let's say that you go for the uh, uh, for uh, the in-house production of uh, data visualizations. So in this case, um, the, the, the employee, the staff, or the freelancer that you're going to uh, hire is going uh, surely to use uh, programmatic tools to actually uh, work. Uh, and I, I'm just listing the three kind of uh, software that uh, uh, this staff would use. So first, some uh, programming languages to process the data, uh, so to filter it, to parse it, to mine it. Uh, so here, R, Python, and MATLAB would be the preferred choices in an academic uh, context and in some uh, industries related to uh, academia, very much uh, knowledge intensive. If you are more on, uh, in industries such as banks, and insurance and um, you know um, large-scale uh, sectors then Java could be the, um, uh, the preferred uh, language. Uh, 
Then uh, what about the creating the visualization itself? Uh, R and Python do provide some tools uh, to create pictures, but they are quite limited and very much have a scientific uh, feel uh, to these uh, pictures. Uh, so other alternatives would be to use processing. Processing is a framework based on Java that allows you to create amazing videos and installations. Uh, JavaScript is the unique choice you have or almost the unique choice you would have to create web-based visualizations and uh, the, uh, the leader in JavaScript uh, libraries, in li JavaScript frameworks is D3. D3.js is the um, uh, framework uh, used by programmers to create visualizations on the web. Um, so if you, I mean, that's really a key uh, essential part. And finally, you would use a software such, uh, such as uh, GIMP, Photoshop or Illustrator or Inkscape to, uh, if you would like to have a printed output, uh, uh, this software help you polish uh, the, uh, the, the visual by adding captions, titles and legends and not changing the visual uh, itself, of course. Yes, so why is programming such uh, an interesting option? Well, uh, this slide is just to show you the amazing flexibility that you can achieve by programming instead of using an off-the-shelf solution. You can do basically whatever you want. Uh, anything that you fancy can be achieved uh, through programming. Um, of course, in an off-the-shelf solution, you just can do what you know the, the menu uh, or the functions of the software um, um, uh, give you. In programming, you can just program whatever you want to be displayed on screen. So it's custom, but very powerful. The second option would be to hire an agency. These agencies would use the tools I just mentioned, but they would do it, uh, they would uh, use these tools for you, uh, and they would be expert at these tools. So I'm just listing here very quickly eight of these, uh, well, just amazing and outstanding um, uh, agencies uh, all over the world. Um, you can use uh, internally also uh, in your organization uh, some click and point uh, solutions. So they are much less flexible than uh, programming, uh, but uh, they are easy to use. You can use them without being a programmer and most of them are free. Uh, so it's um, to experiment, uh, it, there are very good solutions. Um, I myself, uh, I'm in involved in the Giphy community, so I would really encourage you to, to, to uh, test Giphy for uh, network uh, visualizations. But as you see, you have uh, plenty of tools for net to draw networks, to draw maps, or just to draw charts in general. Uh, and finally, um, for large-scale um, uh, in industrial-grade uh, solutions for uh, producing um, um, uh, visualizations, then uh, you, you would have to turn to uh, business intelligence uh, solutions. And these are uh, six of the most famous and um, robust solutions to actually um, uh, create visual visualizations, either for exploration of as it is uh, often the case, or to actually uh, monitor um, your um, uh, well, your performance, or you know, uh, the, um, any KPI that your business uh, relies on. So these solutions are much less flexible. Actually, they are not flexible at all as compared to programming, uh, but they can be deployed uh, and maintained uh, on an industrial grade basis. If you want to go further, uh, I would encourage you to uh, check uh, these resources. So on the left of the slide, these are um, uh, specialists from the industry and from academia uh, posting critical comments on the visualizations that, that are being produced um, on the web and uh, well, in any kind of outlets. And on the right, uh, you would see um, uh, websites uh, giving you list of tools and resources uh, that you could use uh, to uh, 
uh, create your own visualizations or hire somebody. That's it for the course. Thank you very much.